Amen and good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. I did wake up with a little cold, which is why I've got this on, because I don't want to share it with all of you. But friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And let us greet one another. Good morning, kiddos. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And let us join in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, we thank you and we praise you for allowing us to turn to you and to worship you this morning. And Lord, I ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Bless us with your spirit and with your power as we worship you in this place. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. All right, and now it's time for a children's moment. If we've got any other kids that want to come forward, you can at this time. So how is everybody doing today? Good. Did you have some days off of school this week? Why did you have some days off of school? Yeah? Because it was Thanksgiving. Exactly. And on Thanksgiving, what should we do? We should celebrate celebrate and be thankful. We should give thanks. Now, Brianna, will you hit the next slide there? You guys see this picture. You know, we were on vacation. This is a picture when we were in this place, in a nice sunny place, and there was a labyrinth. So a labyrinth, we set them up here sometimes right around Holy Week as we get ready for Easter. But a labyrinth is a path that you walk. And as you walk this path, it's not a race or it's not a maze. It just leads you to the center. It takes a while. Walter and I walked the whole 
whole thing. And it takes a while to walk. But as you walk it, you're supposed to think about your life and all the different times in your life. And you're just kind of supposed to reflect or whatever it is that you want to do at that time. And when we got right about halfway through this labyrinth, there was a, a piece of, I think it was a big rock, and it had a word painted on it. Do you remember what the word was that was painted on it? No. It was gratitude. It was gratitude. And gratitude also means thankfulness. So Walter might not remember all this, but I do. As we made it through that halfway point and we saw this word gratitude, we stopped to think about the things that we're grateful for. And I think that if we're thinking about as we walk through life every so often, we need to stop and we need to think about the things that we're grateful for. And this week has given us time to do that. Every time that we get to Thanksgiving throughout the year, it's like we're walking on our journey, like we're walking on our labyrinth, and we pause to think about what we give thanks for. So I know you probably did this with Pastor Kaylee last week, talked about thankfulness, but I want to know, what are you guys thankful for? Tell me something you're thankful for. Yeah? Family. Family. What else are you thankful for? My friends. Your friends. What else? Your family, yeah. My pets and family. Your pets and family. Is anybody thankful for school? No. Ah, but if it wasn't, we got some hands. But do you think there are kids around the world that don't get to go to school and they don't get to learn how to read and they don't get to learn how to write. So the cool thing about going to school is that you get to learn all sorts of things. And so I want you to think today, I know that, that we've already kind of celebrated Thanksgiving, but I want this thankfulness to continue. I want you to think about what it is that you can give thanks for. And I want you to maybe say thank you to people because the adults and I are going to talk about saying thank you today. And I want you to maybe think about who you want to say thank you to. So if you really appreciate what your parents do for you, why don't you do me a favor? And when you see them after worship, say thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Maybe if your grandparents are here with you, say thanks, grandma. Thank your parents. Thank the people. Thank your Sunday school teachers. I think it's so important for us to pause and actually say thank you to those who will mean so much to us. So now, with that in mind, we're going to stand up and we're going to say a prayer, and then you're going to go off to Sunday school. All right, and let us pray. Holy God and loving God, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we say thank you for all that you do in our lives. We say thank you for all the ways that you are present with us. And Lord, we say thank you for all the blessings we've received. And Lord, I thank you for these children. Bless these children today and every day. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And you can go off to Sunday school. Oh, my children. And now it's time for announcements. Now, I do have a few announcements for you before everybody else comes forward. Uh, but my first announcement is going to be a thank you. A lot of us were at church kind of almost all day yesterday. We were here in the morning decorating. Doesn't it look lovely? The Christmas decorations just make me so happy. We were here in the evening as we were doing the community dinner. Ted Camp was here the, on Friday cooking turkeys. And we had Rick, who is here, getting all the turkeys ready all day yesterday. So I am just so thankful for everybody. And I want to say thank you to all of you for the ways that we've been able to uh, do so much as a community together. And also, I think we had a lot of fun, didn't we? Those of you who were here yesterday, we had a lot of fun together as well. So that's wonderful. And I want you to pay attention to you what is in the back of your newsletter as we have the news, the Zionite is going to go out this coming week. 
But there's a lot coming up because next Sunday starts the season of Advent. This happens to be, usually we start the season of Advent the Sunday after Thanksgiving. This year we've actually got a little wiggle room, a bonus week. And so next week we start the season of Advent, which means we'll be lighting the Advent candles, which means we'll be talking about the Christmas pageant. Those of you with kids, so we're going to start with the sign up soon for all the roles for the Christmas pageant. And we're going to get ready for a whole bunch of things. We also have our breakfast with Santa coming up. We have our children's Christmas Sunday, and we have a blue Christmas service, which is coming up as well, which may have not made it on to, oh, it did, on December 18th. That's going to be over at the Church of Nativity, where all of us Kenton clergy do that together. And so uh, we, that's another thing that we want to participate in. So make sure that you're just checking, uh, putting these dates on your calendar. There's a lot going on, and I don't want anybody to miss anything, because the season of Advent and the season of Christmas is not the same if we aren't focused on what really matters. And so now, anybody else who has any announcements, come forward at this time. Good morning. Um, I would like to um, let you know that the um, missions committee is going to be starting our annual collection for the ARC um, facilities for children with disabilities. So if you would like to participate when you go into Cook Hall after church, you will see there's a table set up with some tags on it. You take the tag, it will tell you a little bit about the child, and then you bring back your gifts unwrapped with the tag, and we would like them back by December 10th. So after the service, you can just pick up a tag in Cook Hall. Thank you. Good morning. Um, first, I'd like to let you know Women's Fellowship Christmas brunch is December 16th at 12 o'clock at Payne's Restaurant on Payne Avenue. Uh, there is a cookie exchange. If you sign up, just check your name if you want to be part of the cookie exchange. Uh, the second is, if you notice, the bulletin board out there was changed for Sunday school. We had the children's pictures up. If your child did not make it, please let me or Sue Clark know, and we will get a picture up there as soon as possible. Um, it was tough keeping track of who we had and who we didn't. We kept checking names off and then going, wait, we missed somebody. So please let us know. Also, <clears throat> I'm very happy to announce my daughter opened her own practice. She's a speech pathologist with a certification in dementia care. It's called Silver Linings. Her name is Amy Rust. Uh, she focuses on dementia care in home. She will come to your house and consult, and she works on cognitive and speech. So I will put a flyer out there. If every, anybody ever sees the need, please think of her. Thank you. Good morning. I was listening to Pastor uh, talk with the children, so I was listening, and I want to say thank you. Uh, so the, every year for Thanksgiving, the community dinner, a lot of hands go into it, more so than even typically the regular monthly community dinners, whether we're grilling or whatever. And more time, but also many other different talents come in. So I want to personally say thank you um, to all that helped, uh, especially Chef Rick. Um, his uh, he's, his teaching even his teaching moments even while we're cutting up the turkey. Um, I personally appreciate Melissa and Jake Cordy. I those turkeys aren't prepped and in the in the roaster without them being there. I can tell you it was. Uh, a, a bit of a uh, a bit of a thing, um, but they were they were heroes to me personally. Um, but even more so than that, just getting the turkeys. We you know while pastor is away and I'm trying to get turkeys and we had problems there. But guess what? Those prayers were heard. I know uh, some people that I had uh, talked to said, well, "We'll pray that everything comes together." That matters too. I want you to know that. And just, you know, just by being there in, and, um, you know, the prep work that happens even to decorate uh, the church, that doesn't happen unless somebody is, is moving forward and, and, and thinking about those things. So whether your contribution was just prepping or the serving or everything, the, all of those things matter. And I want to say thank you. 
And with that thought, too, I almost forgot to say we have dinners left over. I think there may have been some people who uh, were a little turkeyed out, but hopefully you're not because we've got a bunch of turkeys left over, uh, turkey dinners left over. So grab them from the fridge if you would like to take home some turkey dinner for uh, lunch. And now let us join in a moment of prayer as we light our peace candle for the final Sunday before the season of Advent begins. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we light this candle, Lord, and we pray for peace. We pray for peace that surpasses all human understanding. We pray for peace in our lives. We pray for peace in the world. We pray for peace in Israel and Palestine. We pray for peace in every community that knows strife. Lord, we pray for peace here and always. And we pray this all through Christ Jesus, and together we say, Amen. Please join me for our call to worship. In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness are all of God. We come with grateful hearts not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in song and prayer. a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is Oh my God. 
And now, before we read our scripture lesson today, which comes from the Gospel of Luke, the, second, the 17th chapter, I was standing there looking at the flowers that we have right there, and the flowers are from Margaret Gers's funeral that we had here on Monday. We also had Becky Belling's funeral on Wednesday. Uh, we had a, we've had a, more funerals this year than I've ever had in my 14 years of ministry, just so you know. Uh, this past year has been a very funeral-heavy year, so uh, I just want to honor that, that we've lost a lot of wonderful people. But as I was looking at the flowers, it just made me smile because I'll tell you that when I started here as a 25-year-old pastor, if you weren't here for Margaret's uh, funeral with us on Monday, um, then you don't, you might not know this, but Margaret and Jean Gers were two of my greatest supporters. Whenever anything was hard, they were just right there. And so when you start ministry as a 25-year-old, it's not easy. And having people like Margaret Gers, who's now in heaven with Jean Gers, it makes such a world of difference. And we still have people like Margaret and Jean here today. And I just appreciate everybody who is just a constant supporter, not just of me, but of others, of each other. That's what we're meant to be. And we're meant to support one another. We're meant to lift one up. And so to everybody who turns around and supports each other, especially in this church and lifts each other up, you make a difference. And I thank you. Uh, and that's just the thought that's on my mind as I was looking at those flowers over there. But now we're going to read uh, from the Gospel of Luke, Luke, the 17th chapter. We are reading the Thanksgiving lectionary today. And so while I love the lectionary text that's in for Sunday and for last Sunday, uh, and I love those uh, parables that Jesus was telling, I think that since we have an extra Sunday before Advent begins, it's really important that we focus on gratitude, that we focus on Thanksgiving, because I don't think that we spend enough time focusing on gratitude. I truly don't. And there's uh, this one line where somebody says in the middle of a song, of a Christian song, where somebody breaks into kind of a message and they say that when we are at doing, when we are showing gratitude, there's not as much room in our brain for anxiety. There's something neurological going on there. I think that, a, that gratitude is such an important thing for us to show when we have that lesson here. So we're going to read from the uh, lectionary from Thanksgiving, and we are going to start with verse 11, reading about Jesus cleansing the 10 lepers. If you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? amen? Starting with verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, 10 lepers approached him. So that means 10 people with leprosy. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. And then one of them, one of the 10, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise? to God except this foreigner. And then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen. And let us pray. Holy God and loving God, we thank you. And Lord, we praise you. And Lord, we ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us at this time and this place. Bless the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our minds, so that all that we do and all that we say can be holy and acceptable for you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. So I usually don't title my sermons, but if I was to title this sermon, I would call it What It Means to Give Thanks to God. That's what I've been thinking about a lot this week. What does it mean to give thanks to God? And I'm going to start with a slight confession in telling you that I am not very good at saying thank you. I am not one of those people that, that's always thanking people for everything that they do to the point where sometimes I almost get myself in trouble for not saying thank you enough. I just, it's not something that comes to me. I, I know I write thank you notes, but I don't write thank you notes for half the things that I should. I like to say thank you to people, but I've had to work on that because so often throughout my life, I've, I've thought that I've been thankful, but I haven't done a good job at vocalizing it. And one of the reasons might be because I spend a lot of time with church people. And here's the thing about church people. People might say bad things about church people, but I think church people are pretty darn awesome. So here's the good thing about church people. Just think yesterday, many of us were here throughout a whole bunch of the day yesterday and nobody did it to receive any praise or any thanks. Everybody just did it because they were asked. We needed volunteers. They showed up. They wanted to. They wanted to help. So church people are so used to volunteering on so many occasions for so many different things and they don't do it for any thanks. They just do it because they want to. They want to participate in the life of the church. They want to help wherever they are needed. But where I've gotten myself into trouble is when I'm with a lot of non-church people and what I've learned is people 
people who don't volunteer on a regular basis need more attaboys and attagirls than regular people who are used to volunteering. And so one time when I remember getting myself in a little bit of trouble, somebody was helping with something, and I forgot to give them the praise after they helped with that, and then they were so upset because I didn't praise them for that one thing that they had done. So when I look at this text... This text that shows us somebody who gives abundant thanks and is praised by Jesus for giving that abundant thanks, it makes me do some introspection and it makes me realize that giving thanks verbally or giving thanks through the writing of notes, giving people thanks is not something that comes super naturally to me. It doesn't mean that I don't appreciate people, but it's one of the areas that I need to grow. You know, when you've got those weaknesses that you need to grow in. Giving thanks is one of those areas that I need to grow in. Is anybody else like me or are you guys all really good at giving thanks? Anybody else need to grow in this area a little bit? A couple of us. All right. But I think it's important as we look at this story that maybe we find out that we are like that one man who turned around and and gave thanks to Jesus and that's awesome. But if we find out that we're like those other nine, if you're like me and you're like, well, man, if I was healed of a terrible illness, and Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. I probably would have run right, you know, right to the priest, shown myself, and then ran to my family and friends. And I probably would have celebrated with them. And I don't know that I would have thought to return immediately and to give appropriate thanks to Jesus. So if you're like me and you wonder, well, maybe the excitement of all of this, maybe the joy of being healed, maybe the overwhelming joy and amazement would have kept us from turning around to giving thanks that was due, then it's okay for us to see ourselves as one of the nine people in this story and not the one who returned. And the reason it's okay to see ourselves as one of the nine is because that means that we've got work to do. And the funny thing about when I read the Bible and I realize I have work to do is I love it because I love when I've got work to do. I love when it means I can work on becoming a better version of myself. I love when I realize I've got some work to do because that gives me something to work on. And this area of giving thanks is one of the ways where I know that I want to work on even more. And here's the thing, that one person who returned was a Samaritan. We know that Jesus was between between Samaria and Galilee. He was traveling back and forth, and of course, Jesus is Jesus, so we always went straight through Samaria, even though most Jewish people didn't do that. And Jesus, he had healed 10 people, nine of whom we can assume were, Jesus, were Jewish, and then one of whom was a Samaritan. And the one who returns to Jesus to give thanks and to praise God is the Samaritan, which also means so much because that Samaritan wasn't supposed to interact with Jewish people. He wasn't supposed to have that relationship with Jewish people because the two groups of people didn't like each other. And yet it was the Samaritan who returned to the Jewish rabbi and gave abundant thanks. And that's just something I also want to pay attention to. But Jesus uses this man as an example. This man who was not supposed to come running up to Jesus. Jesus uses him as an example. Jesus notices what he does. Jesus notices the way that he gives thanks and the way that he praises God because it is right to give thanks and praise and praise and thanks, they're, they're two sides of the same coin, but they're not exactly the same, are they? Praise and thanks, they're, they're the two sides of the same coins, but they are a little bit different. And we find out in this reading that this man both praises God and give thanks to Jesus. He does both. And these two go hand in hand, but they are not exactly the same. And here's the thing. I told you I'm not very good at giving thanks, but praising God, that's right where I'm at. Praising God is what I want to do all the time. I, I love praising God in worship. I love that we have two worship services on a Sunday. So even though I'm leading worship, there's enough times where I can just sit there and I can truly praise God. I love praising God in the airport like I did last Sunday as I had you guys in my ears as I was worshiping with you before boarding the plane. I love praising God out in nature. I love praising God on a hike. I love praising God in some random place wherever it is. I love praising God in a group of people. I love praising praising God. So while giving thanks is my weakness, I would say that praising God's up there as as one of the things that comes more naturally to me. But praising God and giving thanks, while they go together, and both of these are important, they're not exactly the same thing. 
Now, I, there's a book of, by Anne Lamont. It's a book that was written back in 2012, and the book is called Help, Thanks, Wow. And in this book, Anne Lamont says, I've come to believe that there's something to be said about keeping prayer simple. Help, thanks, wow. And she goes on to explain how simple prayers can be even more powerful than long and flowery prayers. Sometimes people come to me and they're like, well, I'm not very good at praying. You don't have to be good at praying. You don't have to have long, flowery words to pray. The most important prayers, the most powerful prayers, I think she's right, they're the simple ones. Help me, God. Thank you, God. Wow, God. Those simple prayers are some of the most important prayers. And and two of the ones that she names here are the ones that we're talking about today. Thanks, it's a prayer of thanksgiving. It's verbalizing to God. Thank you, God. Just yesterday, Marcel and Mary and I were out in the shed and and we're in the shed getting all the, you guys notice the outdoor nativity sets are out. And so we were getting all the outdoor nativity set stuff and I was up on a ladder. Marcel had offered to be up on the ladder, but I like climbing up on ladders. Usually don't have a problem. So I climbed up on the ladder and I was handing the things down to them. And then I was about to get down and there was this beam that, that it was right there at the end of the shelf, and I thought that it was part of the shelf. And so I grabbed onto the beam as I went to step back on the ladder. It wasn't part of the shelf. It wasn't attached. And so as I went to step back and this thing moved, my body started to go back. And thank the good Lord. I was just telling Ted Camp uh, the day before about how I swear God's always got my back to the point that I'm, God's got to be like, Elizabeth, you could do a little bit more on your, on your own. I don't need to have your back on everything. But this is one of those moments where literally God had my back. I was coming back and I saw Marcel being like, oh, you know, trying to get there. But I started going back and then thankfully went forward. That is one of those times where throughout the day I was like, thank you, God. Like, that could have been so bad. I could have gone falling backwards where I started to verbalize, thank you, God, for not letting me fall back onto concrete from the top of the ladder. Thank you, God, for that moment, for the way that you pushed me forward, that you literally had my back. Thank you, God. So we need to learn how to verbalize those thank yous. Not only do we need to ask for help, which a lot of us are good at asking for help from God, but we also need to verbalize when we want to just say, thank you, God, for what I received. Thank you, God, for helping me. Thank you, God. But we also need those wow moments. And those wow moments, those are the moments I live for. I don't know about you, but those wow moments, those wow moments are the most important times. Now, we were on vacation, and and for those of you who don't know, we were on a cruise. And so we were on this cruise, and we had a balcony room. And this is one of the days that I think we were out at sea. I can't even place exactly when it was. But I was standing out on the balcony, And I'm just standing out looking into the ocean. And then all of a sudden, my 10-year-old comes and walks up next to me. And then he's standing there next to me, and he goes, Wow, Mom, can you believe God created all this? God is really cool. And I just looked at him, and I smiled, and I said, Yeah, buddy, God is pretty cool. And we just stood there and had a wow moment together. You know those moments when you're just in awe of God? Those moments where you just look out and you're like, yeah, God is really cool. Or wow moments can be like if you climb up on top of a mountain and you, and you make your way up to the top of the mountain and then you're standing there at the top and you're looking out at everything and everything looks so small. And I'm looking at two people in the back who climbed a mountain with me along with Brianna just a little while ago. And when you make your way all the way up to the top of the mountain and then you look out and everything looks so small down below. And you just have a moment to look around and suddenly there's no noise. You just stand, stand there and you're like, wow. God is really cool. Wow, God, those are wow moments. Or do you know some of my favorite wow moments don't involve an ocean or don't even involve a mountaintop. Some of my favorite wow moments are when I'm sitting there with my family and, you know, we're all up on the couch. We've got a sectional couch in our living room, so we're all, we all pile up onto the sectional couch and we're all there and, and either we're all reading a book, a different book there quietly, or maybe we're all gathered there watching a movie. And whenever we're doing that and everybody's getting along really well, you know those moments, parents, and everybody's getting along and everybody's together and then there's always a moment where I just pause and I look at the people that I love the most in the world 
all sitting there together. And I just say, wow, God. Wow. Those are the wow moments. And if you think about it, friends, those are the moments that we live for, aren't they? Those are the moments that make life worth living. Those wow moments. Those are the moments that are just so beautiful and so powerful in our lives. So as we make our way through this bonus Thanksgiving Sunday, which I'm really appreciative of, because I need to learn to say thank you more. And friends, thank you. Thank you for being this community of faith. But I also need to learn how to say thank you to God more. I think we all do. And I, if we want to go back to what the original you know, topic was, what does it mean to give thanks to God? What it means to give thanks to God is to verbalize thank you. Whether God's literally got your back as you're falling off a ladder, or whether God's just awesome. To stop and to say thank you, God, to verbalize thank you, God, is such an important prayer that I don't think we make enough. I asked on Facebook, I said to all of you guys, I said, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? And I love this list. I grabbed some of the things from the list. All of you who commented said, my church, my family, my children, good health, all the blessings I've received, goodness and light, my parents, my pets, my friends, everything. That's just some of the items that were listed as I asked people what to give thanks for. And let's pray for those things. Let's give thanks to God. God, thank you for my family. God, thank you that right now we're all healthy. God, thank you for X, Y, or Z. Verbalize those thank yous. But the second part of this is the praise part. Because remember this man who turned around, he didn't just say thank you to Jesus, but he also praised God. And he's the example that we have in our reading, the example that Jesus wants us to emulate. And in this example, he also praises God. And praising God means paying attention to those wow moments. They don't have to be big. They can happen in your living room. They don't have to be anything spectacular. They can happen when your family's together. They can happen when you're just standing outside. I've had wow moments when I've seen uh, a weed poking up through concrete. They can be anywhere. So take time to just praise God for the wow moments in your life, even if those wow moments are just saying, wow, God, like a 10-year-old, you are really cool. That's how we give thanks to God. Number one, verbally. And number two, through praise. Thanks and wow. Wow and thanks. Two simple things, and yet two things we don't do enough of. And let's join in a moment of prayer. Lord, we turn to you at this time on this day, and Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, I give you thanks for every single person who has ever sat in these pews. Lord, I give you thanks for every single person who has ever joined with us online. Lord, I give you thanks for every single person who makes up this body of Christ. Lord, I give you thanks for all of these people. And Lord, I thank you for all that you are to all of us. And Lord, we praise you for the wow moments in our lives, and we ask that you help us to, to calm down and to focus on those wow moments and to praise you at those times. Lord, we thank you and we praise you now and always. And we pray this in every prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship with our tithes and offering.
let us pray together. Gracious God, may this act of giving transform our hearts and our minds. May you bless these gifts and use them to do your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen. with the blessings of God. Go forth giving thanks and praising God always. Go forth, be blessed, and be a blessing to all. <laughs> 